Now, there's a growing trend of collapsed marriages, especially in urban areas such as the Greater Accra region. In 2021 alone, a total of 79 customary marriages were dissolved at the Accra Metropolitan Assembly. And uh, you have on your screens now some figures that we uh, have put together for you, um, which indicates uh, the rate of divorce uh, across uh, this very municipality here in the Greater Accra region, where uh, we'll tell you shortly what the trend has been. The Assembly says in 2021 alone, it registered a total of some 345 customary uh, marriages. But on your screens now, you have the total number of registered customary marriages, which is 345. Uh, total number of registered customary marriages is um, uh, 79. Uh, and uh, so when you subtract that, you can do the math for yourself. You see that uh, the trend flows as it is on your screen now. The highest being recorded in August. August of last year, 13 uh, dissolved marriages and the lowest uh, being uh, September. You have that in February of last year as well. Uh, these were the two lowest points. Uh, and then you have June as the second lowest with four. Uh, however, the highest is August. And then the trend repeated itself somewhere around November. So the total number of uh, ordinance marriages registered here in the Great Accra region alone uh, is somewhere around 5,000 403 ordinance marriages conducted by the assembly is 1779 so that's the spark difference uh, the stark difference that you see there on your screens but we have uh, information on the dissolved marriages relating to the uh, customary marriage now according to the local authority the divorce figures for 2020 alone were lower compared to the trend that is, uh, was recorded last year. So what are some of the factors accounting for this trend? Uh, joining us via Zoom now is uh, Amos Kevin Annan. Uh, he is the convener, singles in 3D and creative couples uh, conclaves. Uh, he joins us now on Zoom and uh, it's such a worrying trend that you're seeing now. So what do you suggest uh, some of the factors that are accounting for this trend that we are witnessing starting uh, from late last year where we had a, a, a high uh, a rise in the figures uh, to where we are today. W what are some of the factors accounting for that? Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for involving me in this conversation. I think that the factors that bring about divorce are as diverse as the kinds of people we have in a giving society. It is therefore very difficult to proffer one particular reason as the basis for some individuals who may have found themselves in a divorce condition. It is worrying, as you rightly pointed out, but we can proffer some thoughts that we have become familiar with, because I need to actually interrogate um, the document that you have uh, taken your data from so that I'll be able to look at what really was the necessary steps that we're taking to either save it or to bring to the annulment. The first thing I would say, which is very common knowledge, is the quick nature in which uh, people go into marriage, ill-prepared and ill-informed. Those two things are very important. People go with all kinds of fanciful ideas into marriage, and they only go in to discover that their ideas about marriage was not exactly what the experience was going to be. That ill preparedness and ill informed position can cause an individual to then develop disenchantment in the relationship. And we know that when people become disenchanted with a particular activity, not only marriage, they tend to disconnect from it and not giving their all into that giving endeavor. Now, when you disconnect over a period of time, the other party begins to also, you know, disconnect from you because the disconnection caught into its uh, trail another form of disconnection. Now, many are also then getting into a space, they begin to outsource some of the critical things within marriage, i.e. conversations, friendship, intimacy, and we know that many, many individuals, when they suspect there is some flirtatious conduct or intimacy with another party, would easily call for a divorce. 
because they cannot share you with another, unless, of course, that particular kind of marriage is potentially polygamous. But if it is ordinance, then we know that it is between one man and one woman. But customary tend to be potentially polygamous. And so that would be one. Also, the presence of cruelty. Cruelty. Individuals are becoming very callous and inhumane in the way they relate with others. And their treatment of persons they claim to love causes people to lose the interest in the so-called love which is being offered. So cruelty in the relationship can be a factor and has always been a factor that contributes to people's decision to walk out of an otherwise stable marriage. The other thing that can also happen would be non-consummation of marriage. You know, marriages where there is no intimacy, one is being denied or deprived of intimacy, they are not getting sex in the marriage. Uh, the other party who is not getting sex will begin to look outside. Now, when they use that as a basis to want to ask for divorce, the courts will usually grant them. You know, um, when people are cruel, that also has impact on the children, especially where there are children uh, present in the particular marriage. The children being saved by one party can say, for instance, for the sake of the health of the children and the future, I would rather be out of a marriage than to stay in and be a bad example. So there will be myriad of reasons that would inform a person's decision to walk out of marriage. Mm, as a consultant, what, what are your initial checks telling you about the strength that we're witnessing? Is this peculiar to the greater Accra region alone or urbanized areas? So, I mean, we have couples from across the country and all of them are faced with the same stresses. But of course, when you're within the urban setting, the pressure is enormous. Uh, some individuals even have lost their jobs and their other spouse is seeking to walk out of the marriage because of insecurity that they feel is threatening them. So there will be many, many reasons, like I said, but the essential thing is that some are also finding ways of winning the battle in that respect. And all of us have a duty to support our own brothers and sisters who may be going through some checkered moments with their marriages. Uh, well, at this point, let me ask uh, Councillor Kevin Anand to stay on for us uh, because we want to make this conversation um, interactive where you can also call us and share your marriage experience and also share your experiences uh, with us on this uh, rising cases of divorce. What do you think are some of the factors and what questions do you have for the councillor? 0302 211 or 0302 -211 These are the lines for you to call us uh, on and uh, you could put, put your questions across and then share your concerns or your questions uh, with the councillor. So the phone lines are active now and we could get uh, uh, to have them ca come through. But uh, councillor, just to take you on this uh, as well, um, looking at the customary marriages, the setting in which they are as compared to the marriage under ordinance and, and looking at this trend of increasing divorces that we're talking about, what setting, marital setting, would you say is preferable or desirable in this era that we find ourselves in relation to, to the trends that we're seeing? Oh, well, I mean, I think that what is bedeviling marriages is with no exception to any of the categories of marriages. All of them are faced with the same stress because they are all um, entered into by human beings. And these human beings already are stressed. And the pressure on them has a tail effect in the marriage. So when you see the individual, they are processing many things that they themselves uh, are struggling to contain. And therefore, when they relate with another, there tends to be tension. So I would say that, yes, of course, it is easy to annul a customary marriage than it is when you are annulling um, marriage by ordinance, because the processes tend to be cumbersome in the ordinance marriage. But we know also that persons will opt to do the customary. Some even don't do the rights. That's the other thing. Some don't even do the rights. Others are cohabitants um, who go and seek for 
some kind of uh, alimony and for that reason either they go to social welfare or go to the courts to ask that those things are given to them because some are actually living with individuals for a very long period of time some four five six seven even ten years you find people are living Danny. together they are not really married and yet um, they expect that once they are moving away from you, you have to compensate them. And that compensation um, is something they would go to the court, for instance, to uh, execute against you. And they would usually have a, some grounds because when you promise somebody I'll marry you, and for that reason they pack bag and baggage and come and live with you, um, that promissory note, the lawyers will tell you, can, you can be held to that mm. for promising a person and not delivering. Okay, Councillor, let's see... Um what more concerns are out there? Joining us now uh, from Oti okay. region is Aglimaji. And mm -hmm. he, I'm sure, has a question for us. Um, so share that with us. Yes, you are on. Yes. Hello? Yes, uh, let, let's hear you make, make your contributions. Uh, it appears that we're having some challenges there. Let's now uh, move to Messi. Messi is uh, joining us from Bukwasi. Messi, what do you have to share with us? Yes. And so when one partner or the other partner is not fulfilling that expectation um, with which they went into the marriage with, then it becomes a problem. And I think that um, with this research that is being done, um, I hope um, at this time a lot of people, especially married people, are watching this program. Um, we as married people, we need to encourage ourselves. Marriage is not for kids, it's for grown-ups. And though we move into marriage with so many expectations, you need to know that some of the expectations might be met and others will not be met. And so I think when we all have that at the back of our mindset, it would help. Yes, marriage is not a bed of roses for someone. So don't let someone come, especially we the ladies. We listen to people's marriages and think it is all nice. So we want the same in our marriage. And especially with the men too, in instances where there are um, things like all men are promiscuous. I think at the entire time as Christians or any religion, we have men who are exceptional who would say that, hey, for me, I can I can admire a lady, but I wouldn't cheat. And we have women who would also say, yes, I came into the marriage with so many expectations, but let me do my duty to the wife so that my marriage would work. And I think this is how fast. This is my advice. So this is my take. Thank you. Well, Messi, we're grateful that you're calling us. Messi has just won for herself a free voucher for breast screening. And uh, you, you could pass by any time at our front desk here at Joy News. Um, you've won yourself a voucher. So uh, it's for breast screening. You can just pass by uh, any time uh, from now and pick that voucher up. It's a, it's a very special gift that we are giving to you here at Joy News. Let's hear from Yeboa joining us from um, North. Uh, that's uh, the North um, East um, region. Uh, Yeboa, if you can hear us, uh, what, what can you share with us um, this afternoon? Yeah, but you are you are on. So let's hear you then. Okay, Hello? so councillor, yeah, yeah, but it appears that um, we're having some. I think your boy is still on. Yeah, but yeah, but if we could, um, if you could just make go ahead and make your points then. Uh, so, Councillor, Council, I'm sure that uh, you would have to come through now. Um, All right. You, okay. You've, you've had, I, I wanted you've had, to say something yes. about the issue of expectations. Right. You know, when it comes to expectations, first and foremost, it has to be disclosed to the party from whom you expect something. Now, once you disclose it, you get into the second stage where you discuss. I think your boy is saying hello still. Um, well, but, but just make the point, we'll come, we'll come to you. All right, again. okay. So you have to discuss the expectations to see whether they're reasonable, can be met or cannot be met. And then out of the discussion, decisions are made. And it is that decision that you come to or those decisions that you arrive at that you can hold each other accountable to. But where one has an expectation, 
which has not been disclosed, let alone be discussed and decisions made out of it, it becomes cumbersome. Okay. So there are people with unreasonable expectations which they enter into marriage and they hold one another account to it. And it's an unfair posture to have in marriage. Okay, then. Um, Boateng is joining us from Kumasi. Uh, hello, Boateng. Uh, and what do you have to share with us? Hello. Yes, go ahead and make hello. your point then. Thank you very much for giving us such a great opportunity. Um, talking about um, divorce, I believe that um, they are principles, the basic foundation of getting into such a relationship or marriage. Everything starts from somewhere. Hello? Yes, we're with you. Yes, go ahead and, and make the point then, Wazi. Hello? Yes, you are on. Um, so Okay. Okay. What I want to say is that a lot of people don't get prepared before they get into a marriage. You realize that a lot of marriage is not for marriage is not for kids. You see, marriage is for those who are matured. And before you get into marriage, as you realize the Bible says, I'm basing on scripture. That for this question, a man, he didn't say a boy. A lot of people get into marriage being boys. And instead of maturing from that stage into the adulthood stage, they refuse. So independently, they are not independent in mind. They are not independent in financially. And they get into certain things which realities begin to dawn on them and now they begin to find escape routes i believe that communication i believe that intimacy i believe that the maturity to handle uh, or solve problems are vital elements in marriage and that is why we should start looking at that area mm. so that we will prepare as parents as communities we start preparing the minds of people to teach them what marriage entails so that they will not fail. Okay, One Martin. of the things that has affected a lot of people is culture. We have so many cultural perceptions which do not exist. We should clear, try and clear all those things and make sure that it is a serious business. Thank you. Thank you very much. Boateng joining us there from Kumasi. And any time you call us, I would uh, plead with you to turn down the volume on your uh, radio uh, set. So this afternoon, some... 15 women, about uh, 40, who call us and call into the show during uh, the, the, the discussion that we're having. You'll have some vouchers, so would, uh, just uh, would want to open the, the, the lines a bit more longer for you to also keep on calling and making your contributions. Don't forget that this is the month of love, and here at uh, Multimedia, we are giving out some vouchers, and that is being supported by the Roach uh, Products Limited. Terms and conditions apply to this. Uh, participants must be 40 and above. So this expires on the 30th of April 2022, and the voucher must be submitted uh, physically by you, the, the participant. So don't forget that we're giving out some free, uh, free vouchers, but that is coming on terms uh, and conditions at the International Maritime, uh, Maritime, uh, Maritime Authority, uh, uh, Maritime Hospital, I should say. Uh, but let's um, pick some uh, more calls uh, before we get back to Councillor. Uh, Michael is joining us from Oyarifa, and it's quite surprising that the men want to take over this conversation. Obviously, this concerns them as well. So, M Michael, what do you have to share with us? Um, I also want to contribute to more, like the last caller indicated. Right. You see, we do not prepare well enough before going into marriage. And in most cases, there are these religious misconceptions about marriage. For example, if you are a member of Church of Pentecost, you must definitely marry from the Church of Pentecost. If you are a witness, you should marry another witness. And so people within the community, because they want to f satisfy these religious uh, doctrines, they end up marrying the wrong people. You see, 
In the Bible says that the two must agree and become one, one in mind. You see, and so in other places too, the men they want to misquote the Bible that the man is the head of the family. And so in trying to show that, they think that they should boss it over their wives. No, if the Bible says that if you, you have to be the head of the family, it is to give directions. Until we get to understand that marriage is not about one being a servant and the other being a, a master, then marriages will not work. Then the other thing I want to add is this sexual incompatibility. There are some men who behave and they are like sex machines. And so if you get a woman you are married to who is not a type who likes sex, mm. my brother, it is going to be difficult in that union. And the vice versa, you have a woman who wants sex so much and does not have a man who likes sex so much. It is a big problem. Mm. And the last but not the least I want to talk about is this telenovelas we watch. People watch certain things on movies, and then they think that it should be applicable in their marriages. And so when you want to apply what you watch on Kukum Bajia and the others, and you want to bring it into your marriage, that marriage will not last. Mm. So I think that the two gentlemen who made their submissions, it's very, very important to prepare. It's a long journey, a journey mm. of no return, because the Bible has intended that marriage must be a long journey. Okay, then. It's one the same thing. Traditionally, the traditional leaders do not entertain divorce. And so until people prepare adequately, financially, you are found, you have a place to sleep. And the other expectation, like my learned man, uh, brother said, you see, if your expectations are so high, oh, I want my husband to build a house for me, I want my husband to take care of my brothers and sisters in the village, when you do that, then you are making a big mistake. Because if you allow the treatment of your brothers and your sisters at home to be the paramount, it will create problems. Mm. Okay. So I want to urge Thank that you. the churches, the monks, the traditional leaders, when people are getting married, in fact, they should counsel them a lot. Okay. It's important for counseling. That is the letter I want to contribute. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let's speak now to Kabendal from uh, Kumasi. What do you have to share with us? Uh, yeah, good evening or afternoon. Yeah, um, I think that um, actually some people are not honest and real during courtship. And during courtship, especially the men, whatever the lady asks, they can even use their last money to uh, honor that request. For instance, uh, maybe a, a man having uh, his last money of 100 Ghana cities, and the lady requests it to make a nails, uh, which cost about 70 cities. Um, the man can decide to honor, among other things. And all the time, the man may try to please the lady by giving out his last money. Meanwhile, when you are married, you cannot honor these obligations. So when you portray this character during the courtship and then um, after marriage, you are not able to honor these obligations. Mm. You see that the lady will find it disappointing because this was not what uh, you portrayed to her. So um, the lady thought that you could have uh, all the time been giving your last money to her to solve other issues. Meanwhile, as you are married, You'll be planning towards a, a building or other projects or what, uh, in which uh, you cannot uh, control these things. So, mm. in fact, uh, in marriage, especially the man, uh, the men, we must be real and honest in how um, we, we, we want to uh, stay forever, but not to portray uh, some fake character to attract the lady in order to win her for marriage. And... And some men also think that, oh, uh, it is during courtship that uh, he is doing this and that. And when they are uh, actually married, oh, uh, she, uh, he can control her and he will not give her distance. 
and he was accepted. It is only during court. Meanwhile, you are um, giving her this uh, image that you can do this, you are ready to do that and do that. So after the marriage, when you fail to do this, you have disappointed the lady. Okay. And the lady is likely to ask for that voice. Thank you. Thank you for uh, joining us from Kumasi. But uh, let's go back to Councillor now and uh, find out uh, what, what his expert thoughts will be on all of the concerns that you're raising. Councillor, uh, I know this one will be a very controversial one, but our earlier caller talked about sex and how much sex is enough to sustain a marriage. <laughs> no matter how um, funny this may sound or innocent this may sound or naive this may sound, that question still c keeps coming up. And, and that was part of the questions one of our callers raised. W what's your response well, to that? He, he related that to what he called sexual incompatibility. Right. Well, when it comes to the whole thing about incompatibility, an individual can be incompatible with himself. Because sometimes your thoughts and what really is in your heart are not consistent with each other. They are grave conflict. I'm sure you may have had experiences where you've climbed um, a story building or maybe a skyscraper and you felt like jumping down. Did you jump down? For a moment, your thoughts and the premonition, I mean, premonitions you have were not in alignment. So you have to make a determination whether what you're feeling and the thoughts running through your head are proper. In much the same way, marriage requires adjustment at all times, in all facets of the marriage, marital life. Now, so even individuals go into marriage with entrenched positions on matters, like conflict, including sex. Oh, as for me, I want sex 10 times. You, you have to sit with your spouse and have a conversation. It's about frequency of sex. You need to discuss frequency. You know, if you don't discuss it and you expect the other to deliver on what you have not discussed, it becomes a point of potential conflict. You know, there are people who expect that, oh, my, my wife would always be at home or my wife would be the one who cooks all the time. And yet now you go and marry someone who has different understanding of cooking. And so they expect you to schedule. You take Mondays, I take Tuesdays, and then you take Thursday, and you go on and on and on. And then that is not what you were expecting. You take it into marriage, and there is a need for both of you to adjust. If you don't adjust, you would consistently have conflict, and you end up blaming it on marriage, whereas the problem is the two of you, your inability to find a point of convergence. Coupling requires convergence. I'm doing some study with a guy who teaches on uh, body language, Joe Navarro. And Joe Navarro says that synchrony is harmony. We synchronize so that we stay harmoniously. So spouses need to be on the same page. Otherwise, conflict will be inevitable. And when conflict is not properly managed, it escalates into a point where we want to be out. And sometimes it's not a case that the person is a bad individual or um, a bad material for marriage. Sometimes it is a way we are managing our differences. And differences must not disturb us. It can be a great point of growth for all of us. But people are too entrenched in their positions and don't want to see the other party shifting to a point where they can be reasonable with each other. Now, so my, sex has become a big thing. And more so, it's become so salacious everywhere. People have developed all sorts of theories around sex, and they're creating a monster of it. And so persons go into marriages, and the kind of you know, addictions that they carry and convey into the marriage becomes too much for the other part to carry and to bear. And for that reason, they say, well, I can't stand this kind of demand on me. How do you have a standing order that says that I want sex twice in a day, seven times in a week? I mean, what kind of marriage is that? Don't you have time to do other things? You see, so right, there's a need for us to get couples to talk with each other mm. because no matter what it is, okay. one of the things I've learned over the years is that nobody adequately prepares for marriage. Okay. Uh, and 
I'm sure that this conversation will happen sometime later, but I'm grateful Kevin Amos uh, Annan, who is so a actually counselor. Amos Kevin Annan. Uh, right, I, I, get, I get it. I get how passionate you are about it. But, but of course, he's also the convener for the Creative Couples Conclave. I'm grateful so much that you've been able to join us. Well, yeah, later... Yeah, Uncle, Uncle Fai is there. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. I hope I can exit now. Yes.